Hey there, I want to talk a little bit about a short video clip that went viral the other week on Twitter and probably elsewhere. We'll take a look at it in a few moments, but to just explain it concisely so you know what to expect, it depicts a pro-Israel Zionist Jewish woman who, when confronted by Jewish people who are anti-Zionist, is so perplexed by it that she works herself up into a tearful rage and screams at these Jewish people that they're, quote, not a Jew, end quote. It's something to behold, honestly. So let's take a look and break it down. <laughs> To start off, the Orthodox Jewish man is absolutely killing it. He describes Zionism as a political movement that is causing bloodshed and says that a Jew does not support genocide. He goes on to say that Jewish people and Palestinians have and should live in peace together. What he's done here is separate Jewishness from Zionism, drawing a line between these two concepts and making it clear that it is the genocidal actions of the political ideology of Zionism with which he disagrees. There's also something I really like about a very Jewish man holding up the Palestinian flag. You know, because Zionists and the Israeli government try to claim Jewish people and hide behind them. Zionists have effectively used the specter of anti-Semitism as a shield against criticism. That's not to downplay anti-Semitism, because obviously there is a lot of it. You just have to look at the replies Jewish conservatives get from their own cultivated far-right audience that they helped radicalize and that now hates them for being Jewish. Or look at the far-right opportunists who've used Israel's genocide in Gaza as a channel through which to promote genuine anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. For example, I made a lengthy episode about Andrew Tate doing exactly that, claiming that if we are being lied to about who the good guys and bad guys are in, for example, the conflict in Gaza, then we must also have been lied to about who the good guys and bad guys were in World War II. But you'll have to loop back to that episode later for a more thorough analysis. Let's shift the focus back to the video of the Zionist woman. In response to what the anti-Zionist Jewish man said, she screams, quote, We come from Israel. Our people come from Israel. You have come. Your people. What are you talking about? That's where our family is from. I'm from Israel. How can you hold that flag? What are you talking about? That's our ancestors. That is, what flag is that? How can you say that? You're a Jew, end quote. Yeah, there's not a single argument being made here, so there's nothing to really argue against. The anti-Zionist Jewish man laid out a bunch of arguments and reasons for why he supports the Palestinian people and opposes Zionism. Her response was indignation, confused anger, and an appeal to ethno-nationalism. Quote, our people come from Israel, you're a Jew, end quote. She didn't present any information or arguments. Instead, the one assertion that she made was that he should not believe and feel as he does because he is Jewish. Just think about the implications of this for a moment. The idea that your ethnic background should determine your opinions and prescriptive ethical positions. That your ethnic background should determine the side you take in a conflict where human beings are being killed. A one-sided conflict where one side is being killed after 75 years of settler colonialism and apartheid. That's not to suggest that the October 7th attack carried out by Hamas wasn't heinous or horrifying, leaving behind 1,200 dead, mostly civilians. But Palestinians have suffered the bulk of violence and death for decades, in an apartheid system, and since Israel's genocidal onslaught in Gaza started, tens of thousands have been murdered, almost exclusively civilians. 
Millions more are at risk of perishing due to circumstances created intentionally by Israel, such as lack of food and water. But to get back to the idea that one's ethnicity should determine one's opinions, I feel like in almost any other context, such rank tribalism would be disregarded as the fascist fallacy that it is. But decades worth of Zionist propaganda has allowed this fascist sentiment to fester. There is surprising mainstream acceptance of the narrative that Zionism and support for Israel are essential immutable characteristics of being Jewish. What's funny in a deeply sickening kind of way is that this is actually something Zionists and Nazis agree on. Zionists claim all Jewish people as a shield, whereas Nazis use Zionism as a sword against all Jewish people. What Zionism and Nazism have in common is that they're both far-right fascist ideologies with rigid essentialist categories along ethnic and nationalist lines into which they pigeonhole entire groups of people, often with implicit or explicit value judgments on which groups of people are worth more and which are worth less. What the Zionist woman did here is what a lot of Zionists do which is to equate Judaism, Jewishness, and Jews with the state of Israel and with the political ideology of Zionism. Zionists do this for a couple of reasons, namely ethno-nationalist sentiment and the conscious intention of cynically using Jewishness as a shield against criticism by invoking the often violent persecution Jews have suffered throughout history and still today. Zionists employ the term anti-Semitism against any and all who oppose them. The irony of this is that it is actually quite anti-Semitic. I feel like the world has gone crazy because I shouldn't have to say this, but I do. That's because the media and political establishment often parrot this nonsense. The idea that it is anti-Semitic to criticize Israel and Zionism because in their minds, Israel and Zionism are the same things as Jews and Judaism. But it is the people who believe this who are anti-Semitic, as they try to pigeonhole an entire ethnic group into one homogenous set of political interests and beliefs. Even if they don't hate Jewish people as such, reducing Jewish people into an essentialist archetype is very obviously grossly anti-Semitic. Pretty much a textbook example of bigotry, similar to the belief that all Asians are good at math. Except in this case, it's the idea that Israel has a monopoly on Jewishness. Therefore, anything the Israeli government does is by definition Jewish. And therefore, it would be anti-Semitic to oppose the Israeli government, because that is tantamount to opposing Jewishness. This is just deeply sick fascist logic that is thoroughly embedded in Western institutions. Let me say it again to be perfectly clear. It is an anti-Semitic trope to equate Jews, Jewishness, and Judaism with the state of Israel and the political ideology of Zionism. Zionism is, as such, anti-Semitic. Anyway, after not getting the response she wanted when she appealed to their shared Jewish ethnicity, what did the Zionist woman do next? Quote, you're not a Jew. You're not a Jew. How dare you? End quote. She literally screams at the Jewish man that he is, quote, not a Jew, end quote, because he supports Palestinians' equal right to life. Again, there isn't really any argument being made. Instead, she invokes another concept, where before she invoked the concept of ethno-nationalism and their shared Jewish ethnicity, now she's invoking the concept of race traitors. She's denying them their Jewishness because she feels they didn't live up to that Jewishness. Like, this is literally just the fascist concept of being a race traitor because you don't buy into the race war the fascists ideologically believe in. 
Zionists, who after all are fascists, do view the conflict in Gaza as an existential fight between their people and the Palestinian people, essentially a race war. I was going to put in the script here that Zionists ascribe collective guilt to all Palestinians for the crimes of Hamas, but that isn't really true. Because Zionists have viewed Palestinians as subhuman enemies since the inception of Israel, long before Hamas ever existed. Colonizing the area they view as Israel and turning it into Jewish land has been a long-term goal for Zionists. That's kind of the whole point of Zionism. Palestinians who lived there before the Zionists have been and still are in the way of achieving that aim. This, in the minds of Zionists, makes it a conflict along ethnic lines, where the Jews must prevail. So, if there are ever any Jews who disagree with any of that, they're race traitors, in the minds of Zionists. Jews who don't believe that the Jewish people have a divine right to the land of Israel are considered race traitors by Zionists. Jews who don't believe Palestinians are, as an ethnic group, an existential threat to Israel and an obstacle in the way of building a Jewish state are considered race traitors by Zionists. This is the exact same fascist tribalism you find among Nazis, who view white people as race traitors if they don't treat non-whites as enemies along ethnic lines. I'm not saying the Zionist woman is necessarily consciously choosing to accuse the Jewish men who disagree with her of being race traitors. I think, as is the case for a lot of fascists, this confrontation provoked a strong emotional response because fascists are deeply emotional and irrational, and she is falling back on concepts that feel intuitive to her based on her ideological predilections. In other words, she probably never sat down to rationally consider the concept of race traitors and how to logically apply it in real time. No, this is an intuitive reactionary response that springs forth from the subconscious framework of her conscious ideology. Then again, there are fascists who definitely do sit around and think about race traitors all day long, so... Who knows? At any rate, she is being anti-Semitic. It is anti-Semitic to equate Jewishness with Zionism and then accuse Jews who disagree with you of being race traitors, or, as she put it, not being Jews. If any Zionists come across this video, and I'm sure they will, and go to the comments to be mad at me for calling a Jewish woman anti-Semitic, just pause for a moment and consider first how badly you will lose that argument. Not just because minorities can, of course, fall prey to bigoted narratives, but because she is literally accusing the Jews who disagree with her of being anti-Semitic. Quote, how can you say that about our people? You're not a Jew. End quote. The difference is that she's accusing them of being anti-Semitic because they don't meet her standard of being Jewish. In other words, blind support for the state of Israel and adherence to Zionist ideology. Whereas I'm accusing her of being anti-Semitic because she is pigeonholing all Jews into one box and saying any Jewish person outside of that one box is anti-Semitic and, quote, not a Jew, end quote because they're outside the box. They close the blockchain! They close the limits of blockchain! How can you say that you're Jewish? How can you shame your own people? And now we're back to their being Jewish, apparently. But only to once again use that to invoke the fascist concepts of ethno-nationalism and race traitors. Quote, you're Jewish. How can you shame your own people? End quote. Girl, he's not shaming his own people, because unlike you, he doesn't view Zionism as an essential part of Jewishness. Because, as he explained right at the start when he said, quote, Zionism is a political movement, end quote, this doesn't really have anything to do with Jewish people, but everything to do with the state of Israel and the Zionist ideology of its government. 
Damn, look how mad she is. Because they believe in Jewish, I'm standing in. I don't want that. That's our country. That is our country. How dare you say that about our own people? Just pointing it out here, no value judgments. But the man who is mimicking crying is using a master suppression technique, specifically ridicule. On the other hand, she is pretty much engaged in what could very well be described as crybullying. So maybe a smidge of ridicule is fine. Screaming, I'm Jewish, to invoke victimhood and imply that disagreement is tantamount to bigotry doesn't really work when you're surrounded by other Jewish people. <laughs> and we've already talked about why it's wrong for Israel and Zionists to hide behind Jewishness anyway. <laughs> And there it is, the climax of this drama. If a leftist woman made this face, you'd bet your ass that the far right would use it as a meme for decades to make fun of emotional leftists, especially women. I don't think there is anything wrong with being emotional or reacting emotionally, but it does kind of depend on the circumstances. Screaming yourself to tears because you met Jewish people who aren't Zionists like yourself is not very sympathetic. Quote, why are you like this? End quote. She wonders, before being pulled away by who I assume is her husband. Oh, and there's a little child in the stroller. That's just great. Seeing your mother scream at Jewish people that they're not Jews because they support the Palestinian people's right to exist. Oh boy. I feel like her question is actually quite apt, though. Why are you like this? Why are so many people like this? How can so many people view Palestinian life with such little regard and often outright contempt? How can people react appropriately with horror to the news of 1,200 dead Israelis, but shrug off the thought of tens of thousands of dead Palestinians? How do people so easily fall for dehumanizing narratives and not just accept but even cheer on the carnage we're currently watching unfold in Gaza? Questions for a different video, I'm afraid. For now, I'd like to thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. I am trying to grow the channel and any help would be greatly appreciated. If you have any thoughts, leave a comment below. And I'll see you in the next episode of Patchication. All right.